Many farmers are looking for ways to rid their fields of weeds without using chemicals. Others have too many herbicide-resistant weeds. One way to combat the problem is to turn up the heat. Market Journal's Brad Mills tells us about flaming and how it can play a role in integrated weed management. No matter what type of field you have, battling weeds can cost you time and money and really try your patience. Over the years, different products have been introduced to the market, but oftentimes the weeds will win out. According to Dr. Stephen Knezovic, a weed scientist with the University of Nebraska Department of Agronomy and Horticulture, six weed species have developed a resistance to Roundup, a common herbicide. We've been using Roundup Ready technology for the last 20 years or so. And then over the years of uh, overuse of Roundup and over relying on Roundup, you know, we're seeing uh, weeds just uh, resisting uh, Roundup. Uh, one of some of the latest cases are uh, uh, glyphosate resistant uh, Palmer, Palmer pigweeds or Palmer amaranth. Now many farmers are turning to flame weeding or flaming. It's a method that in the past has been used primarily in organic agriculture. Some of the issues that we have now with the Dicamba technology, with this potential drift and everything, some of the farmers uh, chose to actually go back and plant conventional beans, and some of them are actually interested in using flaming for weed control. Knezvik helped patent a four-row unit that he uses in his research, but notes that farmers can use a flaming kit the size of a backpack or look into a massive eight and 12-row machines. Flaming uses a propane-fueled torch and can reach a temperature of up to 2,500 degrees. It will cost about 10 to $12 for an acre for one shot of flaming. Flaming is done at least uh, twice in the season. You can start off early uh, by planting the crop, let the crop come up, let the weeds come up, and then you can do some rotary homing, you can do some cultivation, or you can do the first shot of, uh, of flaming. And with all this technology, it's important to understand your crops and how the flaming process works. Improper use could result in a severe loss of yields. Depending on which crop you have, some crops are, tr are trickier than other. You know, if you flame, for example, beans, uh, you can kill the beans or you can hurt the beans pretty bad if you don't know what you're doing. Corn is uh, corn, all three corn types and sorghum, these are grassy type crops that are pretty resilient to flaming. Uh, you can nip the leaves uh, with the uh, with the flame, uh, but the grow from the growing point, the new uh, new plant is just going to keep uh, keep going. In soybeans, if you nip the growing point of soybeans, then you're in trouble. So basically, and then you can come back later on when the plants have some height and everything and do a second shot, second shot of flaming. Currently the technology's biggest drawback is a lack of equipment for flaming to be the only source for weed control, but researchers see the method as having a strong potential. What's the future? Uh, this year I had 67 organic guys. Uh, the, the wetter we have the spring times, which means you cannot go in with a mechanical means to remove the weeds, this might be your one of the only alternatives. So, uh, so basically that's the answer, what is the potential for that? It all depends what, what, are, the, uh, what are the environmental conditions out there. You know, but this definitely has a potential to be one of the tools in the toolbox. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Brad Mills.